All right, let's listen to some opinions. I will. Josh and Nicole, hey. Rob from Michigan. What's up, Rob? My side hustle is I do 3D printing. Sick. <gasps> Shout out to Opax Prints. Okay. But <laughs> Good I was just wondering what your guys' opinion on the future of 3D printed food would be. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to keep this one short and simple, so have a great day. I don't reckon there is a future, Nicole, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, okay, so... So much of our food system is already basically backlog in the infrastructure that we already have. Mm -hmm, And a lot of it doesn't necessarily have to do with even meeting demand anymore, right? So, for instance, our dairy farms have grown so big and so efficient, they can produce so much dairy. They're locked into subsidy systems, um, despite the demand not actually being there. Um, But it's so freaking cheap to produce that they just produce so much of it because it creates jobs and they just dump it into a field. So you got all these people out there who are like, we can 3D print steaks using the hemoglobins found in animal proteins, and it looks exactly like and We don't have to kill animals. But the fact is there are hundreds of thousands of people whose jobs, whose livelihoods are out there right. that is killing animals because you can make steak that feeds people for very, very cheap because cow farms have existed for hundreds upon hundreds of years in America. So I think a lot of these 3D – and, of course, any new innovation is going to take time to implement – but I think it is so freaking expensive um, and can only happen on such a small scale. And the demand isn't there. And it is beating against an industry that has – I'm only talking about the weird 3D printed meat that we're sure. seeing out here. There's probably other applications for 3D printed food. There are. I know they use it in the, in space in space stations and stuff like that. Um, the stuff that I've seen right now, pretty rudimentary. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, we 3D printed a pizza and it tastes like almost like a Lunchables pizza. And it's like, mm, cool. gross. I want a guy named Giuseppe making me a good one. Yeah. Um, but for me, I don't know. I – 3D printing, very cool technology, but like a lot of new technologies in the food space, it just doesn't actually beat the current technology that we have, right? Yeah. Um, We actually used a 3D printed sugar cube for a GMM episode one time. that stuff's fun. And it's cool. You know, the novel, I understand the novelty of it Mm. and having it exist in like a small store or, you know, maybe a CPG product here and there, but I don't see anything 3D printed taking the place of, I don't know, a tomato or a steak, like you said, or a bottle of milk or whatever it is. They can try, but I don't see it. I don't see our society accepting it. Yeah, and there's also a lot of people who are like, but it can curb climate change and all that. There's a lot of companies that market themselves Almost as tech companies, yeah. like I'm thinking of Beyond and Impossible, sure, yeah, right? The two yeah. companies are like, oh my God, it's a veggie burger that bleeds in a completely new technology. It's like our soy protein burgers have been around for, you know, it's 40, cool. 50 years. It's cool and it tastes good, but yeah. it's an improvement in a food product. It's not a technological revolution. Sure. People right? want it to be. People they want it to be dying and they, for a and they invest yeah. in it as if it is. But yeah. like if people are imagining like a Wally future of food, human race ain't going to exist long enough to get there. We need to yeah. wor- worry about making the food systems that we currently have better. Better. Yeah. And 3D Rob, printing. I'm sure your 3D printing stuff's awesome, man. Yeah. Can you 3D print us like a surfboard with our faces on it? I don't know how to surf, but I'm sure I could learn if I had one. 